It's two brothers teaching truth, fighting false doctrine, and priestcraft in the last days. And, and, and it's, 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 it's two brothers. It's, it's, it's just, just two brothers. brothers. <laughs> All right, guys. Welcome, welcome to the best podcast in Australia at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and what makes it the best? Because, what was the joke you just said? <laughs> Three Irishmen and a Scotsman walk into someone's lounge room and you wouldn't know which one's the Scotsman. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all doing a podcast. Yeah. And for the first time, that joke makes sense. Because yeah. they can see it. <laughs> Did you get it? Did you get it? Okay. Um, nah, thank you very much. And uh, listen, let's get this podcast started. Mm. Let's do it. Yeah. Nice. 欢迎大家今晚出我们的机会 <laughs> I feel I like I'm in an IP band movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, welcome to LES Down Under. Down Under. With the two brothers. <laughs> oh, I like what they a, didn't tell us about that. Uh, what a collab. What a collab we got going on. Yeah, so, we are very lucky to have the two brothers with us today. Um, mm. If you don't know them, where you at? Because these guys are proper, proper amazing. And they have their own YouTube channel. And they have loads of episodes in there. And um, yeah, you want to let them know your names and log one. Uh, yeah, so uh, my name is Christopher. A lot of people call me Topher. It's like my nickname. Um, and uh, well, this is Ammon. Yep. Yeah. And uh, we are two, two brothers. brothers. <laughs> so what we are, what we are, is we're two brothers, <laughs> and that's about all that really makes us unique. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so tell us, who's older? Get, oh, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, I like, I like making people guess because yeah, it, it's, it's actually yeah. fun. But who would you have guessed? Before oh, I said, I would have said you're older. Yeah. Yeah. So you often, said, yeah. Yeah. Even, older. even sometimes with our younger brother again, people will still think I'm. Not the oldest. So. Yeah, really. Oh, okay. It's probably just because I act a fool. But... Can, can I ask, mm. where does Topher come from? <laughs> yeah, so so Chris Topher. Christopher. Yeah. yeah. So it just started as a Chris nickname Topher. like... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> got it. Yeah. It just started yeah, yeah, yeah. as a nickname like... Uh, I don't know. It'd be, it'd be... What year is it now? Uh, carry the one. It was a long time ago. <laughs> carry the one. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Just, a, just a way to be unique, I guess. So yeah, when, yeah, yeah, when yeah. Adam met Eve. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. But don't forget to carry the one in that. Yeah. Yeah. That was the generation. That was, oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. So tell us, um, the episodes that you have on YouTube, what's your YouTube channel about? Yeah, so it's obviously called Two Brothers. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's actually a little awkward to find on YouTube because the church has a two, it's called Two Brothers Two. Funnily enough, yeah, we didn't even that. know that until we made seen this that. and then started Googling and going, wait a minute, this is not our stuff. So yeah. anyway, it's a little hard to find sometimes, but um, that's fine. So we like we just like talking about things that we find interesting. Mm-hmm. And uh, what really kicked us off is we both kind of had what we call our wake up stories, which you'll hear a lot these days about people differentiating themselves themselves from other members of the church by having said they're sort of waking up to realizing what time period we're living in. Um, and we're going to talk a bit about this tonight, actually, about the last days and what that really means and why do we know that we're in the last days and yeah. things. But we've woken up, you know, and we like to say not woke in the, in the liberal sense, we're just, but we've woken up to, to, to the fact and to the knowledge that we are in the last days, leading up to the second coming, right? Mm-hmm. So it's an exciting time. And we like talking about all those sort of things that, that, and not just that stuff, but we really enjoy those topics. Mm. So that um, we, we make videos about, about those topics that are leading up to the second coming. Okay, yeah. pause for a second. I forgot to say, guys, this is going to be deep. These guys are <laughs> smart. At, it's not Brian and Rodney that. anymore. This is, yeah. put on your seatbelt. Because he just started talking there and I was like, I don't even have my seatbelt on right now. <laughs> <laughs> it was <honestly. laughs> I, I feel like... You know when you first started out as a convert and you went to gospel principles? Yeah, yeah. And then, you're and then you had the high priest in the yeah. other room. It was like, we were like, day one. <laughs> These guys are good. <laughs> I remember I went to this uh, this thing of Mandra Ward once and you got around in a circle and you had to say, if you could be anywhere, where would you be? 
And this guy came along and said, Kolob. And I looked at him and went, good one. <laughs> <laughs> what a weirdo. <laughs> like, and you didn't have an, any idea <laughs> no, what you were saying. No he, idea. He's making up words over here. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking Paris and I love like this yeah, guy. Yeah. Cool he's enough. a Spider-Man fan. It's a different... Gen- it's a different universe yeah, 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 yeah. it's just yeah, yeah. like what is this guy doing no what, what what we really like we're really grateful to be here with you guys because what we love about your podcast is um you talk you can talk about anything you want but we love the way you break it down mm. um and i was saying this saying this to you before i love the way you guys interject and then you'll say what explain that thing yeah, and break it down because yeah, yeah. we take that for granted a lot when we talk because we just rattle off things that we assume yeah. We assume people when they're watching our videos do know what we're kind of yeah. going from and, yeah. and, and know what we're talking about. But we do that, make that assumption a lot. And what we love about your guys' podcast, also coming from two converts, right? Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say So that. totally yeah. different perspective. I think we're going to talk a bit, bit about that first maybe, but um, totally different perspective from our perspective. And um, what's really cool is you break things down to make them simple to understand, not in a bad way, yeah. Yeah, yeah, in a yeah, good yeah. way. Exactly. And we for, wanted it to be Yeah, because like we, we understood what it was mm. like mm. starting up, you know what I mean? Just to let everyone know, um, that you guys are members of the church. Yeah. You're members of the yep. church and you were born into the church. Yeah, so lifelong and in. Yeah. Lifelong. We're lifers. <laughs> Don't mess with me. Yeah. <laughs> we got post, nothing to lose. <laughs> Except my eternities. Post serve missions. Yeah. Post serve missions. Yeah. 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 And so being members of the church, grew up in the church versus us. Um, so people know our story. They yeah. know how we started. But, but just to re- rehash again, how long? Because I know you're, you're seven years. Seven years and how long? Five. You? Which right. is so it's, I mean, it's yeah. nothing. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it's really still can, kind of ha, like how old are you guys? I'm um, just turned thirty-eight. Yeah, so we're very similar in age. Thirty. Oh, twenty-seven. Oh, he's all youngin. Oh, oh yeah, youngin yeah. over I'm here. Young, I'm a younger. I'm yeah. younger. Nice, younger. but so yeah. that I mean, that's uh, you know, se- did you say seven years? Seven years combat. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's it's not even a mm. a quarter of your life. You know what I mean? Like it's a, such a tiny drop. Mm. In, so in what I know about the church is mainly from here. Because wow. I was a I was mm. a new member for a year, went on my mission. Mm. So that member for a year, I didn't know much at all. And that I went on my mission, amazing. learned about the church, came yeah. home and started, you know, when you come back from a mission, I know for me, it was a sense of I was still trying to figure out the world and trying to figure out myself. And then I moved here. And this is like the first time mm. where I spent two years here in Australia where I've actually dove into the church. I've understood I've started to understand a bit more. I've been a member, an actual member, kind of knowing a bit more. Mm. So I've started to understand. But now. you know what's crazy? Mm. I went on a mission and I didn't think I knew anything. Do you know what I mean? And you went on a mission after being a member for a year. Yeah. That is, um, and I don't want to like keep, I'm going to keep complimenting you guys because I find it very, um, I'm, I'm always amazed by converts and, and, and I find it really impressive, really yeah, impressive yeah. because what I always say is, if I wasn't born into the church, like if I didn't have it given to me, I don't know if I would be strong enough and um, even on that path looking for it, do you know what I mean? And, and whether, and I, if a missionary came to me and said, hey, there's this thing, I'd probably be like, I don't care. Do you know what I mean? I, I imagine me being that way. I know mm-hmm. what I'm like. Yeah. So I'm really grateful that I was yeah. brought up, in, up into the church and I have this real deep respect for converts because I don't think I would have the courage to even make that change in my life. Because I think we made the comment once in one of our pods about, like, he sort of comes looking for you. Mm. And when he Mm. thinks you're ready, Mm. that's when he comes after you the most. Mm. You know, like, and so I didn't realize, but I had connections with the church and missionaries at different times of my life. But only small portions, you know, nothing big until they literally knocked on my door. Mm. And that's when all of a sudden I was in the right place at the Mm. right time. That was suitable for me, you know. So I think he comes when we're ready. If he comes at the wrong time, you're liable to get pushed away. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. So he he knows. He does know. So that was yeah. the same with me when the first the missionaries came to me. I was studying in uni, and they they tried, but it didn't succeed. So I always I, I probably I said it in one of the episodes mm. that those missionaries probably think. Oh, he, you know, he yeah, they wouldn't even job. know. They, they wouldn't don't even know, know what's yeah. happened. You know, yeah. the I mean? seed that they sowed. Yeah. 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 So with you guys, okay, being born into the church, okay. First of all, this 
podcast is sponsored by yeah, <laughs> uh, Bundaberg. Uh, there's, just a, there's just a few uh, here. Yeah, yeah, there's a few. <laughs> but being brought up in the church, was there a time where f- you went astray? I think everybody, <laughs> every not maybe not to a great extent, yeah, but I think yeah, most yeah. people that grow up in the church, they go through a period of, do I believe in this thing that I've been participating in mm-hmm. since I was a child? Yeah. Because you're brought to church, mm-hmm. you know, um, especially if you've got both your parents going and you're, you're, you rest on their testimony. Yeah. Like we are like, I, like, I don't know about you. I'm sure you're the same, but I trust my dad, for instance, it, you know, to whatever my dad says, I just believe. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah, so, yeah. uh, what was I saying? Sorry to cut you off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We spoke about that. So, it was so far that did it. <laughs> lectures of faith, and one of the lectures of faith from Joseph Smith, he talks about how the only way that you can develop faith in Jesus Christ from the beginning of time was relying on the testimony of somebody else. Mm. So the way that we receive the gospel is all the same. We receive it from the testimony and the faith of someone. Even from Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve eventually had to teach their children. Their t- children taught their children right down until today. So you grow up in a home, in our family home, where our parents teach us the gospel. Mm-hmm. And then you sort of live on that. You start understanding and base yourself off of that faith. And there comes a time where the training wheels come off and you need to decide, am I going to ride the bike in the direction that they've taken me? Or is there a whole wide world out here that's mm-hmm. so exciting and interesting that I'm going to start trying the the, the dangerous playground they said to stay away from? Over here. You know, there's, mm-hmm. there's places where I was told never to go, but maybe that's exciting. Maybe I find out if it's dangerous. And I think in everybody's life around their teenage years, especially in somewhere like Australia, where you don't grow up so much with that safety network of membership friends. Yep. There's no, nowhere near as many. Mm. You're lucky to have one in your mm. school. So it was always Chris and I seminary, Chris and I young men's, Chris and I for everything that we did. And Chris and I were not always together as well. So mm. we had our own groups of friends at school and none of them were members of the church. Mm. And what's that? I think John, by the way, had a saying where he's like, when you get into the car with someone, you go where they go. As soon as you sit, sit in that seat, that driver takes you where he's going. Mm-hmm. And so when you're students at school mm-hmm. and you jump in those cars with your mates and they're going to parties, guess where you're going? Mm-hmm. And if you're constantly around influences yeah. that are influencing you to do the wrong thing, quite often those sort of things start happening. So for me, in my life, it was I've experienced a lot of that stuff. I, I always had a testimony of the gospel, always had a testimony of Jesus Christ. I experienced those things and knew that they weren't happiness. And I knew that the things that I felt in church were happiness. But there comes a time where you also need to say to yourself, I know that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is true. And therefore, because it's true, I know that it will bless me if I follow it. Even if it's hard, even if I don't have friends, even if no one else cares and no one's supporting me. If it's true, this is the path that I need to take. And so I found that path in the gospel and solidified that path for me at about 17 when I read the Book of Mormon every day. That changed my whole life. So, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Can we just go back to the fact <laughs> that you said, when you sit in the car yeah. with your friends who are not members, who are not doing what this... You are going to go where they're going. You, you the can't choose. just jump out the car. No. Because you're going to go where they're going. It's a great point. Because that's, that's that peer pressure part. Like I always say with the, because like I've been in young men's pretty much since I joined the church. Like I couldn't imagine going to school and being a member of the church. Yeah. Like for me, that would just be the hardest it thing. It was, yeah, it's a little um, hard. Mm. So it makes me sort of go, you know, because the thing I found when I joined the church was you had to be willing to stand on your own. Yeah. Like I am the only member of my family. Mm-hmm. So you've got to be willing to stand on your own. And there's those times I was going to ask you about uh, you guys about it later, but you know when people come up to us and say like, and it's happened to me recently at work a lot, like, oh, are you a Mormon? Mm-hmm. And and what's your response? Like, are you one of those people that goes, yeah, absolutely, and you just dive in and have a strong, or do you sort of go, oh, well, um, yeah, yeah, I am, like, because you're worried that fear kicks in. Mm-hmm. We talked about fear before, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I was going to ask you guys, when people approach you about that and go, you know, are you guys Mormons? Are you the sort of guys that go straight in and go, absolutely? Thankfully, now, definitely. 
Um, I, I do, I do feel like I feel like I've always led, like leaned more on that, like that. Um, but when I was more like say seventeen or eighteen or whatever, peer pressure is a heck of a thing. Yeah. Um, it's it's much harder when someone you know, and you know what you know what your friends are like. You know what these people who you know, and you want to be cool. I want to be cool. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, it's very very hard. Like, and you've got to. I've got real respect for teens these days who are probably dealing with some crazy stuff that we didn't ever have to deal with. So, if they can if they can stand up for what they believe in now, wow, well done to them. Um, and 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 I feel like we we actually did a pretty good job. I'd say we 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 were rap scallions for sure. We, um, if anyone from Rockingham State hears this, <laughs> they'll be like, "No, those Wilkes boys." <laughs> I, I can't we believe were, we were always the examples of of like this this the rowdy sons of Mosiah or whatever the yeah, ones that yeah, we were. It's like, true, but like we we weren't we weren't, but like but they all saw us as like yeah. the, the people going out there trying to destroy the church, and then they came around. You yeah, know, they had yeah, their yeah. angel moment. And they came around. Yeah. That's how they treat us because they're like. Yeah. They went on missions and look at them now. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're good we're like, members. We're like the prodigal son somehow. Yeah, we yeah. never really. Like, it's not true, no. but we were seen Our as that. Youngers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the Rockingham State, we were seen as yeah. that. So if this gets out to any Rockingham State people, they're going to know this. We really. love you. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so like, I feel like when I was younger, it was probably definitely harder to sort of go, yeah, I'm a Mormon. Like, yeah, I go to church on Sundays. Yeah, um, but now I'm proud. I, yeah. I love it. I'm proud. Um, and I'll, I'll also make sure to point out the name of the church too, the Church mm. of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, because, yeah. and that's a mouthful, let's be honest, but, yeah. um, I'm proud of it. It's a mouthful I'm proud of. And, um, but people, you know, the Mormon, that, that, uh, that title is still obviously the default thing people call yeah, us. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, I'm proud of it. I love it. Mm. I, I, and I, I'm actually always hoping and I'm always praying to be honest and looking for chances to talk to people about it. But it's actually hard to even, yeah. you know, it's funny when you want it, you can't find anyone to talk to about it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the, the opportunities come when you're not looking, at least expect it. I've got very thick skin for sharing the gospel, like, or, or saying that I'm a, I'm a member of the church in front of anyone. Yeah. anyone. And um, What do you mean when you say you're very thick skin? Like the second someone's like, wait, you don't drink coffee? And I'd be like, it's because I'm a member of the church of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Like they're saying, we yeah. don't drink coffee or whatever. And because of that, like the doors that that is, has closed to me, good. Mm. The doors that that's open to me, amazing. Like I've had, I had a, f- a friend at work I worked with for years and she used to say in our lunch break, she's like, you have to teach me a lesson today. You have to teach me a lesson about the church. And I was like, okay. So I'd spend 45 minutes wow. and go over the plan of salvation. And at the end of it, she'd be like, man, that is just good stuff. That is really, really good. And, um, and another one, I was telling her about the temple and stuff like that. She ended up getting baptized. So I've had, I've had the most, I've given away Book of Mormons at yeah. work and stuff like that. So you go straight. I've, I've developed a very thick skin yeah, yeah, over the yeah, years and years yeah, and years yeah, of yeah. difficult times. At times where it, it should have been quite difficult to say that you remember the church. I always did. And so I've never, I've never had the off switch. I've never had the, I've always understood that I'm getting looked at and judged as a mm-hmm. Christian. I'm getting judged as a follower of Jesus Christ. I've always, have I been perfect at it? Far from perfect. Yeah. But I've always accepted that if I'm going to be that, I'm going to be judged as that. So I may as well just tell people what I am. Yeah. And then, and if I don't, I'm putting my candle under a bushel and hiding it away mm-hmm. rather than putting my candle and example on a hill for others to come to. So I'll be doing the opposite of what, you know, the Savior would, ha- Savior would have me yeah. do. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I mean, just just quickly to riff off that, um, I've had to promise Heavenly Father, and I, I like often when I pray, I've, I've promised Him that if He gives me an opportunity to talk to someone about the church, I will do it. Mm-hmm. I've had to promise Him that because I feel like I can't think of a specific time, but I'm sure there's been a time when I haven't said something when I feel like I really should have. Yeah. And um, so I've promised Heavenly Father now because I would hate. Mm-hmm forever if there was an opportunity and it was that person's opportunity for me to tell them about the gospel and I didn't open my mouth because of fear or something <laughs> yeah that's I right. would hate myself and and it could have happened who knows I don't know but I promised Heavenly Father now if I get the opportunity to talk about the church I'm going to do it mm-hmm. and that is why in this day and age when I work from home and I don't talk to anyone let alone not members of the church yeah. I pre- I'm sitting at home all day doing my thing that's why we make and then I'm with my family that's why we one of the major reasons we started making these videos is because mm. all of a sudden we get to talk about the gospel 
together and family and all that, we get to stu- you know study specific things, yeah, and then yeah. it goes out to the world where people can access it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah so that's one of the major reasons we did it. Because I find it, I find it difficult at times to talk to people about the church because I never served a mission. I was too yeah. old when I joined. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't get that training in talking to people. Mm. So I'm always interested to see what people are like. like. I have no drama with it. I have never had a drama with it ever since I joined. If somebody asked me, I'm like, yep, absolutely. But I also, will, I don't carry it on. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. won't like follow you know, it up. Talk and, about well, because it you don't, you might, are you afraid that you don't know what you might need to say? Um, or is it? No, I just, I don't think, because I didn't serve a mission, I don't get You don't that, have the right to talk about it? Or like the to right sort of to go, yeah. let's just keep going into this sort of thing. And I think it is a bit of that. I don't know what I should be talking about. Yeah. And I know, um, like, uh, the manager of this pod, for example. Um, you know, <laughs> the uh, she, sweetheart of a manager. Oh, unbelievable. Thank yeah. you, <laughs> what a wonderful um, manager. And uh, sometimes we will have a friend or something, and, and we have recently, uh, and we sort of would start talking about things. And my wife's one of those people that would just divulge, like, 15 lessons into, like, five minutes, you know. Mm. And I'm like... Whoa, 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 whoa. You need to back the truck up. You can't just just go crazy like that. You've got to slow it down. And so I'm sort of like, this is how you do it. But when it comes to me, I'm like, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm just going to work. You know what? You didn't, you know, like uh, serving a mission is a wonderful blessing for yeah. the person who serves and for the people they get to serve. But the one thing that you missed on the mission, which is fine because you can learn it now is you talk, you open your mouth, even if you don't know what you're talking about, and yeah. you say what you feel, and it all works out. Yeah. The spirit guides your thoughts. Like, how many times on your mission? I can't even tell you. Like, every single minute of every all day on my mission, I'm on a mission going, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And somehow, things work out amazingly for you. Mm-hmm. You walk around doing what Heavenly Father wants you to do, talking to people and saying things. And I, like I said, I've been a member my whole life, and I still felt, felt like I went on my mission not knowing barely anything. All I knew is I knew the church was true. I knew the Book of Mormon was true. I hadn't read the whole Book of Mormon by the time I went on a mission. Okay. A a lot of missionaries have come across. Yeah. And and, and it's because, it's because, and especially now they go out when they're 18, right? Mm -hmm. Well, when I I was 19, actually, I think I was almost nearly 20 by the time I actually went out and um, still hadn't read the Book of Mormon by then. And it's because um, the 17, 18 years were our, uh, like, is the church true years? Do you know what I mean? Like, Um, and this is another thing I wanted to ask you, you guys, and I don't want to keep derailing off the subjects and the questions you keep asking, but there's there's a difference there because, like I said about, like, say, our dad, for instance, our parents, we grow up with these assumed um, truths that we know to be true because mm. our parents have told us, right? Many times in the Book of Mormon, the goodly parents, the, the stripling warriors, they knew because their mothers taught them, right? Mm. Um there's this huge difference between us and you. I don't want to make this divide between us and you, but mm. this is why I respect you guys so much because we have these truths that were innate, bought, bought, you know, just in us. Just because part of, of, it's part of our basic understanding yeah, it's of life. Just this, this, yeah. These things yeah. are true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you know how to, you know how to, you know, take the skin off a chicken or something like that. Yeah. If you work in a but your mum's a butcher. Yep. You know, mm-hmm. from the moment you start cutting a knife, like mm-hmm. you know how to cut up a chicken and And to that. someone who's never done it, it's the worst thing ever. You'd be like you'd be like, which part do you eat? <laughs> yeah, Some yeah, chewing yeah, on the yeah, bones. Yeah. 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 But yeah, so it's it's um it, what a what a difference, you know what I mean? And I I'd be curious to get your 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 view on that as well. Um but these things we know and but it comes to that time, seventeen, eighteen, whatever, and you've got to really go, geez, do I believe this? Like is this actually true? Do you know what I mean? Like the, um, am I gonna base my whole life on this? Mm. And um, that's where you can't stand on your parents' testimonies anymore. Like, like Ammon said, everything we ever, you know, faith comes from the testimony of someone else every time, unless you've, mm-hmm. you know, experienced something yourself. But I really, we really have to find you, out. You give a knowledge from someone. It comes from human testimony and human testimony only. That's from the lectures on faith. But then you need to act on knowledge. Mm. So faith, faith is a is a principle of power, and power comes through the application of knowledge, which is, which is a doing thing. Mm -hmm. So you can know everything in the world. Oliver Cowdery knew the Book of Mormon was true. Mm -hmm. He translated it himself. An angel showed it to him. You know, he had had, he had uh, heavenly visitations and yet Oliver Cowdery left the church. So if faith is only a knowledge of things, 
that are that are not seen that are true. Um, he had a perfect knowledge, which means should he not have a perfect faith? If he had a perfect faith, why did he leave the church? Simple. You can know something of a surety. I know that that bottle's there. But unless I open the bottle, I don't drink it. No matter how much I know that that's there, it doesn't quench my thirst until I put it to my mouth. So faith only comes into action, a power of action, until you actually act upon it and do something. And then after you've done that, then you receive the power. Then you receive the testimony. Then you receive the knowledge that, yeah, this is right for me. So for me, for me, when I said I read the Book of Mormon, it wasn't just that I knew more from reading the Book of Mormon. It's because I read it and prayed about it and, and acted on the things that are taught and changed my life. And I knew without any doubt that that was true. And that's how that was my act of faith. And I saw the testimony that it was right. And that's why I've just stayed on that path. It doesn't matter what happens, yeah. stay on the path. I don't need the angel. I don't need the, I don't need to see the gold place yeah. because seeing is not believing to the power of faith. Yeah. That's, that's why we don't have visions and stuff every day because there's no need for it. It won't help us. Mm-hmm. People that have had visions, like you said, have gone less active. Yeah, it actually it's, condemns it's, you further. Yeah. If you, if you have a vision and then you actually go less active, it's like... Uh, exactly right. I, yeah, I actually sitting knew against a guy, greater light and knowledge. Mm. I, I, I know someone in the church who basically used to pray for visions yeah. And then someone then said to him later on that that's the last thing you probably want. Mm. And he was like, what do you mean? And he's like, well, because if you have a vision, you then have to live up to the expectations. You're yeah, like beholden from then on to, yeah. to literally you live according to the knowledge you've got. You cannot step away yeah. or, mm. you know, anything because of that. Mm. And then he started praying not to have visions. Mm. <laughs> so that's quite a funny. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Please keep that yeah. stuff away from me. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> and, then, and then the joke is the visions start coming and he's yeah. like, oh. Yeah, I've done it. I've done it. <laughs> I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Guys, I told you weren't ready for this one. This is this is too much. Honestly, I'm already learning so much here. Can you tell us who first of all who was God to you? Okay, personally, not what let's say you've learned, but personally to you, who is he to you? And Rodney, this is for you too, but also do you have a favorite scripture? Yep. So maybe we could go to Chris Topher. Topher, mm. yes. I've got to think about the scripture for a minute because I'm sure I'll have one. But um, God to me, right? Uh, I literally talk to him and think of him as my father. So it's it's I guess it's interesting because we have a father right on earth, mm-hmm. but I, I talk to him the same way, um, and so and I include him in everything that I do, say, think, and feel. All day, every day. So how do you do that? For someone that's, let's say, trying to learn about the gospel, trying to be in that p- point where they're wanting that connection with God. Because I had someone ask me about prayer and how do I connect with him. So you're saying you t- you talk to him basically with uh, through everything that you go through. Yeah, well, like, so here's, here's the thing, right? So we can go into this a bit if you want. Um, I was less active for a few years, so yeah. about seven years. So there's yeah. part of my, my little history there where I did go less active. At what um, age were you, sorry? Uh, this was um, when I was about 22. Okay. And I was less What happened is no one really ever came... And I'm a prideful person too, yeah. right? So I didn't really want anyone coming looking for me and going, hey, come back to church. Okay, pause there. Yeah. Where are you? When he's gone, he lives in the other side of the country. I was, but uh, not like, where are you? But where are you in his life when he's starting yeah, to push away? That's a good question. Because I know him, mm-hmm. you, like family, your family, you know pretty well. You know how to push their buttons. Yep. You know how to encourage them to do things and how to avoid certain subjects. Yeah. He was living the life he wanted to live at the time. Oh, yeah, I'm, an, I'm not a fool. So I, I knew full well that I was being lazy. And, I'm going, yes, and yes. I knew full well that he was being lazy. And I, and I also know from a huge amount of experience that any amount of pushing on him during that time would only ruin things. And I also knew that he had a testimony of the gospel. And so I was hopeful that at some point he was mm-hmm. going to come around. I knew that if I was ever like... Hey, what are you doing? Are you going to church? What are you doing? I knew that that would just be like a screwdriver in his rib cage. Like he'd just be like, Ugh. you know, mm-hmm. he'd, he'd retreat from 
discussion with me. And like, I've had the same experience with my younger brother. So just, just really quickly, mm -hmm. my, my younger brother, when I went to go serve a mission, uh, and I was going to the airport, everyone's coming to the airport, everyone's happy, everyone's saying goodbye. My younger brother's like, see ya. And he ran off. The relationship I had with my younger brother before I served was really, really bad. Mm -hmm. And, um, and when I got home off my mission, one of my goals was you have to have a better relationship with your brother. Mm. And when I got home, I could tell that he was nervous that this recently returned missionary was going to hit him with all this church stuff and try and drag him into the church because he's not, a, he's mm -hmm. not an active member. And, you know, maybe ruin the good thing that he's got going, supposedly. And so all I did was like, I'm just going to love him and I'm going to be his best friend. And it's only because I chose not to force the gospel on him, but tried to be an example. And I tried to love him and I tried to be his friend first before anything. It's only because of those things that he'll listen to me at all for anything. And now I'm having better discussions with him about gospel related stuff. They're small, but it was non-existent yeah. before. And we have a That's much awesome. better relationship. So but, why didn't you have a relationship with him before going? Look, we were, I think I was young and dumb and I was pushy. Yeah. You know, so if I didn't think he was doing what he should be doing, I'd yell, you know, go I'd, at him, I'd go at him. And, you know, I was never like showing him that I loved him out of kindness and service or, mm -hmm. you know, caring or anything like that. I was like, hey, you shouldn't be doing this. You should be doing that. But, you know, that type of thing which only pushed him away. So I was like, I need to do the opposite of that when I go back. So when I go back, I was like, just accept him and bring him in yeah. and show him what the gospel has made you. And he, he knows everything about the gospel. He, yeah. He's had a testimony of the gospel. He still has a testimony of the gospel, I'm sure. But I, I now know how to, how to act in order to be the example to him. And it wasn't telling him what to do. So the reason I didn't do that for him is because I've, I've learned from experience with my younger brother that that would not have helped him either. And so fortunately... So was it just it, prayers from afar? For yeah, him? yeah. It's that, being an example as well. Just And, and see, my parents would... Uh, mum and My mum and dad would often ask and dig as well, like, well, you know, did you go to church today? Yeah. Things like this. And that just really rubbed you the wrong way because, yeah. you know, I, I know I'm not going to church. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I don't need you to, like, dig in my ribs. But um, on Ammon's point there... The easy thing to do is to go, hey, da, 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 da. The hard thing to do is to actually take a step back and go, no, I'm not going to do that Ooh, and be an example. Yeah, That's like hard, that. like but that. it's the effective way. I like that because it's harder to step back yeah. and actually yeah. be like, I can't. Because when I came back from my mission, none of my family members, I went full swing. Yeah. <laughs> I went right yeah. in the juggler and I felt, because every time they'd speak to me, the only way I could speak to them was church because I spent two years yeah. speaking about just God and mm. Jesus Christ so all my answers were God and pray Jesus Christ it. pray it. you know what I mean in my head I'd be like just pray about it you know what I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. but I'm like I can't do that like I need yeah. to and I found it so difficult you know what I mean and I like now none of my family are members of the church but I've learned to step back. And you just said something so powerful there in a the sense of it's harder to step back than mm. it is to go in and be like, da 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 mm. It's harder to love from afar. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So were you expecting him to come and rescue you in a way? Or did you know that he understood to leave you be? I knew that he knew. I, 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 we're pretty... Me and Ammon, like, actually, we, we, when we were real young, we used to fight a lot too, like, and argue and da 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 da, but we've always really also been very close. Um, and especially as we grew older and older, we've been very, 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 very close and very tight. So he knows me, and I know him. And so I, I knew, I knew that he knew. <laughs> I knew that he knew, I knew that, that he knew, we knew that I knew, knew that he knew that I knew. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, it yeah. was, right. it was an unspoken thing that yeah. you knew that he never, you, he never once asked me about church. Never. Because that's a powerful, because people have that thing in their family where it's a part member, you know what I mean? As we talked about, mm -hmm. it's like, what do you do? Mm -hmm. And you, uh, hopefully the listeners that are going through that now know the harder thing to do is to step back and be an example mm -hmm. and love, you know what I mean? This, this is what we, because other people have asked us these questions. And yeah. The, basically, the answer that came out of it was being an example is the best and almost the only thing you can do. Because people know, unless they don't know about the church and you need to tell them about it and here's why you should yeah. da 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 da. 
um, completely, sure, that do that. But if, if it's um, if they know about the church and they're not going intentionally, the best thing you can do is live it. Live what you preach and mm. let that light shine. Mm. Beautiful. And that's it, right? Beautiful. It's, it's a funny thing. We're, we're, when we were talking earlier, uh, before we started the pod, uh, we are talking about, um, you know, like, people have a lot of things or saying and and one of the things that came to my mind was about humbleness right Mm -hmm. and about one of the best things i think we have as as humans is being humble it's the best quality you can have and the lord definitely makes sure that we are humble you know no he will (laughs) and one of the things i find with paying tithing and stuff like that is it gives you a bit of humbleness it you know like uh when you're at that point you know and you sort of got to you got to give that it. Yeah. it keeps you humble and sort of doesn't let things of the world get you know to you too much where you're like oh, I'm not going to pay tithing this week because I want to go get that new PlayStation or something mm-hmm. nope you pay your tithing and so on one of the things I was uh, getting ready for this I was going through our notes for today and I was listening to some conference talks and, and it came up about um, that sort of conversation what you guys were talking about and I was thinking about someone we know and I just want to go, what the heck are you doing, you freaking idiot? You know, yeah. like, I just want to go, no, no, no. you yeah, know, I know, and, it. I, know the feeling. I was just like, that's the, oh. the, the natural instinct is to do that. But you have to, and, and I got this real strong impression today as I was getting ready and I was like, it's that whole, we have to respect people's free agency. Yeah. And we talk about it a lot, so it's like we do. Yeah, and, yeah. But it's it, in the moment, it's hard mm. to to just love the person, and and instead, I just send them texts like, "Hey, how you doing?" Yeah. Sort of thing, you know. Like, I really just want to wring their neck, like pull your head together. What are you thinking right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can't, and yeah. you've got to love them, and you know. You, and, you might and, you might have those opportunities way. sometimes mm. where you know. Like if I, I know Chris really, really well. If I knew that a neck ringing would work, I would have done it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But I know him well enough to know that that's literally the opposite of what to do. Yeah. So I think if you don't know, you should always take that step back, work on being the example, serve, love, care. Mm -hmm. But sometimes if you know them and the spirit directs you to do certain things, yeah, because go for it. Every time's not going to be the same. Every person's not the same. Because we're we're, we're speaking so generally here. You know what I mean? Some yeah, people will yeah. have the experience where someone came along and went, ish, ish, ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. oh man, I needed that so badly. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah, just being, true. I was being crazy. I'm too prideful. I'm too prideful. There's yeah. no way. And but for, for some to, people. For you to see that too and be like, I'm mm. true pride. And it's something obviously to work on. But before you go uh, and maybe run, you could go into your favorite scripture and who God is to you. But before that, you were talking about tithing. And I just want to ask a question. When you pay tithing, do you ever, every time, do you ever have that feeling of, of, I feel like Satan's kind of like, you don't need to. Because every time I, I have my family, we have such a powerful testimony of tithing. Mm. Obviously, for those listening, is paying 10% to, um, I'm going to say paying 10%. To, to the Lord? To the Lord, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's that. not about how much you give, but it's just being able to just give. But every time I'm about to, you know, I'm doing it and I'm like, you know, I paid an extra one last week so I could um, just, you know, shorten it down to this and that. And I always feel like, oh, Satan, no, 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 you're not doing this again. You know what I mean? And, but I want to know. Is that that? He's moving your finger over yeah, to, a, yeah, yeah, to yeah, a zero yeah. instead of a nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah exactly. Well, for, for, exactly. Some, for some people, the tithing yeah. thing is just going to be like clicking yes. a button or yeah, signing yeah. a check. It's not. It's never going to be a thing. But, but for other people, one of the other commandments, yeah. they will have that thing where Satan's like, I know this is one of your potential weaknesses yeah, and I am yeah, going to yeah, come yeah. down on you really Absolutely. hard. So how do you experience when you're paying yeah. tithing then? Do you, is it like a click of a button for you or is it a... Well, for me, sorry yeah. to cut you off there. For me, it's the money... I don't pay tithing. <laughs> <laughs> for me, it's really easy. It just makes it easy. I'm just, I don't pay it. It's easy. <laughs> I, um, for me, the money's not mine. The way I see it, the money's yeah. not mine to begin with. Mm-hmm. It's not mine. He yeah. can have as much of it as he... Asks for mm-hmm. the of the and he only wants ten. As far as I can, as, as far as I can put it, he only wants ten. That's fine. Um, my one gripe with tithing is I wish it was easier to pay. Yeah, I have to go into like a web app and da 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 and blah 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 blah. I mean, I just wish there was like a, 
you used to be able to bpay it. You could just actually go into your account and go, bleh, bleh, done. And now I have to go online and then go, da, 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 da. Yeah. I wish it was just actually easy. It was easy, think, but da, 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 But don't you think so that hard. process is, 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 is that test? <laughs> well, I didn't even see what you said. <laughs> yeah, but don't you think that process is that test of the fact that you have to go so long? It's like yeah, it, so it many things can manual, come at you in that moment. Yeah. Where you're showing that faith of keep moving forward. Keep I tell you, I tell forward. you what, you yes, know, definitely. Pop ups coming up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> hey, this only costs ten percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten percent discount, man. It's the exact amount of your time. I think it's like plane tickets to Bali. This is ninety yeah. percent off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For, for five minutes only. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is on the church's website. It's like a test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pop-ups. But just, like, um, for, and some people really go through that. Hey, some people really go through that difficulty of tithing and I remember serving in South Africa it was the most humbling thing in my life where you see these people half of them living in shacks and not having much and they are still putting in that mm-hmm. money in there and obviously it's not like here where you can just do it. that cash putting it in there looking at it licking the envelope closing it down and saying this is my tithing where I find that like and I'd look at them and I'm like if I get home and I go ahead and act like I, you know what I mean, I don't have enough or whatnot, yeah. honestly, I'd feel so yeah. disgusted of myself because I'm like, these people are going through so much, but yet they have the faith to put that money. Mm. For me, it was all as I, I saw one lady one time, literally, that process of she was signing it, she put the money in, she closed, she licked, she closed it, she wrote her name and gave it, and that I was I was studying that. I was like, it's wow. almost like an ordinance, isn't it? Like, yeah, it's, it's almost it's that, so that, that ordinance of like physically going boom, yeah, 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 yeah. You because know? like, it's it's really like it was it was such a powerful thing to look at, and I was like, that is faith right there. She doesn't know what's happening with that, but she is going out and she has a testimony. You know what I mean? But not going, sorry, deep into No, that. it's all right. Well, can, I, can I add one more thing? Or you, know, you, you go first. Um, the, obviously, with some people, like if, you're, if, if money's tight, you're obviously going to have it's a, a different opinion. If, 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 you, if you've got plenty of extra money, like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? If you make plenty of money and the bills are no problem, I think paying tithing is like, sure, easy. If money's tight and you're literally going, I hope I have enough money to pay my bills and things, you're obviously going to have a different um, perspective there as well. But I look at the way we grew up, right? Our dad made <laughs> no money his whole life. Literally nothing. He yeah. had a hobby for a job. He his had a hobby life. for a job his whole life, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he makes surf. He makes surfboards, right? That's what he's done his whole life oh, yeah, yeah. for a living. Back in the eighties, I think he actually made okay money, like yeah, for, yeah. for the time period. But then it just went. Pfft, you know, it was never made any money. Anyway, but we never. I mean, I'll, you could even say we were poor, even almost. Do you know what I mean? And we never felt like we had no money. Do you know what I mean? Because he was always that. You know, I should say my mum too. Both of them always righteous, always tithing payers, and we always had mm-hmm. plenty. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And and I just look at that and go like, and there's got to be billions of examples of that. Do you know what I mean? Beautiful. The Lord will always look after you. That's yeah, beautiful. yeah. And so, oh sorry. You, oh, just really, really quickly on the tithing thing, and I think this is especially important for the people listening rather than us because we experience the blessings of paying tithing. Mm. But how do you explain to somebody? The blessings of paying tithing. Yeah. Okay. Really and this think, is really easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really easy. If you if you look on YouTube, encourage everyone who's listening to do this as well, and and go to the two LDS archives to channel and look at the the plastic necklace necklace. Yeah, it's a beautiful one. Parable of the plastic necklace, and what it is effectively is a father comes in to see his daughter, and she has this, her favorite plastic necklace, and he s- tells her to take it off. He wants to take it away. She's like, "You have to give me that necklace." And that was her favorite thing, the most important thing in the whole world. And she didn't understand why she needed to give up her plastic necklace. But she said, okay, daddy, you know, I love you, dad. I'll take it off. And she took off her plastic necklace and gave it to him. You know, this is yours now. Mm -hmm. And the dad took the plastic necklace and moved it aside. And then from his jacket, he pulled out a pearl necklace and then put that around her neck. And the whole intention of the father was to allow her to use a little little bit of trust in him mm, wow. that he was going to take a little from her as an opportunity to give her far more in return. Yeah. And that is what our Heavenly Father does for us with tithing, like the example that Chris gave of how our family always had yeah, plenty, yeah. even though we gave up 
son. Mm. We were given more. Mm. You know, the heavenly father says, well, the Lord said, you know, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing so great that you shall not have room enough to receive it is how great this is going to be. Mm-hmm. Mm. So I can just say that we've, I'm sure we've all experienced that in our lives. It doesn't make it always easier to do the thing, but we know that we're going to receive more. Still, it's not always easy, but we will receive more. And, mm. and how do we receive it? We receive it in blessings in several different ways. And it might be financial and it might not. But we will recognize those things in our life. Yeah. That will add, we're, we're building spiritual faith, a spiritual power through faith. Mm. And it adds to our testimonies. And that's how we gain and develop a testimony of tithing. Yeah, mm. and for me at the moment with having a testimony of tithing is as, a, as our family were going through like my visa thing and all that. And we had to pay like four grand for someone to help us and 12 grand to apply for the thing. And it's like everything's gone all over the place. But I I see those blessings as we've had some people like, hey, if you need money, we can help you out. Yeah. I've had my mom say if you need... And it's been like, wow, you know what I mean? That thing of you're not alone, you know what I mean? Like it's it's been a blessing for me that, wow, from being faithful tight payers, all these things have opened to us and to a point where we don't even need their help that the lord has helped us to be in a position where we can be you know because let's say a month ago i mean a year ago we wouldn't have had that but now the lord knows that we need it now so he's made that possible for us to have it now Mm -hmm. and it's not to make us rich or anything it's to help us with what we're going through and then you know what i mean and then we're going to go back to the same you know environment again but anyway yeah it comes a pill yeah 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 and that's what probably i was going to talk about is one of the things i would love is to have that perfect memory of every blessing I've ever received. Mm-hmm. Right one, day, day you will. one day you will. Yeah. <laughs> so like, how great would it be to think about every time we were struggling financially and then going, well, we've got to pay our tithing, it's got to be done. And then the blessings that followed because of it. I wish I had a perfect memory. I remember some, but I wish I had a perfect memory of all those But times. I don't think we'll always yeah. see all of yeah. them, eh? Because I feel like sometimes, I remember my mission every time, I'll be with an, uh, an elder and I'll be like, elder, I want you to pay attention to today. And then we go out in our area and I'll ask, and I'm like, what did you see about, like, what did you learn from today? He's like, well, it's just a normal day. We went and taught and ate and I'll ask. I'm like, if you just break it down for a second, if we didn't go see that mama who canceled on us and then had to walk that five steps this way to meet that guy, we wouldn't have met this one who ended up helping us with this and then brought us into this and we ended up getting free food because mm-hmm. of that person saw us at the right time and da, da, da. And I remember every time because I was in that state of mind where I just needed to see all these blessings, you know what I mean? And then the elders were like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Oh, and also, and I used to love that, you know what I mean? Where, and, and I've started to realize that it's not just on mission. Like, mm. if you really look at your day to day, you will see those blessings that you're looking for. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so, far. so why did why has President Nelson put such a huge emphasis on gratitude? Mm. The the solution to it is gratitude. And yeah. President Nelson is our the prophet of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. Yeah, mm. that's right. So, did could you, you show us? Um, I was going to talk about. Uh, at the general conference recently, right? There was mm-hmm. that talk, uh, giving holiness to the Lord. Mm-hmm. Who was it? Uh, Bishop L. Todd Budge. So general conference, what are Budge. we saying? What, what's general conference? So it's a, a conference we have twice a year and, um, we just had it for October. So mm-hmm. it's October and April and it's an opportunity for the leaders of the church to give us revelation, um, about the times that we're in now things that we need to start preparing for. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that came up, which is uh, related to the whole tithing thing, was he talks about sacrifice. And he says, sacrifice is less about giving up and more about giving to the Lord. Mm-hmm. And that's probably the way I, I see tithing more than anything. It's me just playing my part in this organization and, and you know playing my part in building... Or gathering Israel, yep. you know, because if we if we aren't paying our tithing, then there's no wards, there's no books, no temples, there's no temples, you know. So it's I, I find it's me playing my part in saying I want everyone to be a part of this, and I want every all of us to be happy together. So mm-hmm. here's my beer, mm-hmm. you know. Amen. Um, 
And that's probably the way I see it more. Mm -hmm. um, I'm funny, like, I don't, I'm not one of those people who's like, oh, tithing's due today or something. I'll miss it for weeks or something. But it doesn't bother me because I know as soon as I get back or something, I'm like, oh, tithing's due, yeah. Yeah. I just pump it in there. Like, I don't even, I don't worry about it or anything. I, if it's due, I'll yeah. pay it before I go buy the food. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there's been occasions where I remember, even in this house last three years, we pay tithing, and I was like, babe, we're broke. We don't have any money. And then two days later, I got a check from like Amy Insurance because seven years ago, I had a car with him and I sold the car. Yeah, yeah. Don't you <laughs> love how everyone has a story like that? Yeah. Like, it's yeah, like yeah, everyone yeah. can exactly tell you a time right. when they had zero dollars and a check rocked up and yeah. sold and all so, their And so, do you have it written down? No. <laughs> do you have that story written down? No. Okay. It's on video now. This is, this, is something, <laughs> this is something that Ammon started doing recently is journaling, yeah. um, particularly personal revelation and, yeah. and spiritual experiences. Yeah. Mm. And um, that's something that I'm striving to do right now. Sorry to change the subject again, but I'm striving yeah, right now, well, we're always striving, right, to get more personal revelation. I want to improve my relationship with Heavenly Father. Mm. I'm always praying, like, you know, like, I, I want to know what you want me to do. I want to know your will. Anything you can give me, guide me, whatever. I, I want it all. And that's a good one because someone um, that we know, actually, Crystal, uh, the manager, told me about this story the other day. Someone we know has uh, sort of gone to Heavenly Father with something and wanted answers, got the answer. And then but continue to go back it. and back and back, mm -hmm. wanting more confirmation, oh. more confirmation. And in the end, got chastised for it. Yeah. Like, I've already given you the answer to this. You don't need to keep coming to me. Wow. You know, and, and I think we get caught up in doing that through our lives about when we have hurdles in our faith, we can sort of go, you know, is this true? Is this true? We've received that answer many times. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we can keep going back to it because we are facing hurdles, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yeah, well, so so um, so that's what I'm striving to do right now. Like, I'm, I'm there's a million things we want to do, but one of my big things is gaining a better relationship with Heavenly Father, and particularly because we know what period of time we're living in. It's the last mm -hmm. days. I want to make sure I'm doing what He wants me to do, right? Whatever that may be. Um, so one thing that Ammon started doing was journaling and um, using an app on his computer to sort of write down when he would get spiritual experiences or have a dream or something that would happen and he would write it all down. And um, I just realized I haven't kept a journal since my mission, right? Mm. And I wasn't even that great at doing it on my mission. I kept it for a lot of a mission and I missed a big chunk. Um, and if you're not taking seriously and, and showing appreciation and gratitude for what Heavenly Father gives you, he's not going to keep giving you stuff. And yeah. in prayer, specifically saying thank you for mm -hmm. those certain things mm -hmm. rather than just saying thank you. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Sure, he's yeah. like, oh, so you saw that? Yep. Yeah. Let me give you more. Yep. Oh, you saw that? Let me give if you more. If you're not going to acknowledge his blessings, then he's not going to give them to you. Mm. Yeah. Because he knows you're not going to see him either ways. Mm -hmm. So he started writing all this down and then he goes to me, you, you should keep a journal of these things. Because I'm like, I want to get more revelation. You know, I, I, He's I, always I, saying to me, he's always saying to me like, yeah, I think I get revelation. Like, dude, you do <laughs> all the time. But yeah. the reason the reason when I ask you the question, your immediate response is, oh, I think I do. It's because you don't have that instant thing where you're like, oh, well, I've got a book of this stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, I, I've, got, I've got pages and pages and pages. And so I start being a hypocrite. I'm very, I have a very good memory for a, like revelatory experiences. Mm. But I'm like, I'm not going to be a hypocrite. The Lord teaches us line upon line, precept upon precept here a little and there a little to the perfect day. And you're not going to get the next line unless you've cherished the first line and acted Oof, on it. Unless you've cherished. You don't get it. So if he gives you revelation, you're like, that's cool. You didn't write it down. You haven't thought back on it. You haven't cast your mind over the things that you needed to learn and become. The next line doesn't come. He doesn't give you the next rung in the ladder. You're not getting to heaven. What it's not happening. Cherished, like. So every t so I've had some crazy experiences lately, where, and I won't say much because they're special to me. But I've I've had experiences where very specific things have come to me. Mm -hmm. A line, very very important, and I haven't understood it, but I've received it. Yeah. And I've I've gone. This is given to me for a very specific reason. So I've written it down and then I've come back to it and I've like, I have to study that. This mm. is what I have to understand. Oh, sorry, yeah. And as I've come back to it and back to it and I've studied and I've started writing out, you know, all this, all these experiences that I've had, I'm writing out how it ties into the gospel of Jesus Christ, how it ties into the word, the recent words of the prophets and apostles 
and what I think Heavenly Father wants me to be, all of us, all of a sudden, it's like having a patriarchal blessing from the Lord. I've, I've mm-hmm. written it all out for me. So I'm like, okay, this is what he wants me to be. Yeah. And then I try, I'll try and do that. So I think the way that you cherish something from Heavenly Father is it's, it's the same thing as him giving you that pearl necklace. Once you've got it, I mean, you're going to cherish that and keep it safe. Mm. You, you're going to wear it to your nicest events. You're going to make sure that no one can take it away from you. Um, you know, think of that in a spiritual sense. You, you want to be who Heavenly Father would have you be. And as soon as he sees that you're grateful, as soon as he sees that you're going to act, you're going to do more, you're going to do something about it. Mm-hmm. When, when the priests following Joshua were carrying the ark into the Holy Land, they had to cross the River Jordan. And you remember, if anybody tilted holding that ark, they were zapped, right? Game over, they're dead. Some people tried to touch the ark to help, dead, they're zapped. The priests carrying that ark walked into the River Jordan. They walked into the water before the water parted. Understand? They knew line upon line from the from the uh, the faith that they had developed they knew the heavenly father would part those waters as they yeah. moved through it so they didn't wait they didn't sit there and go all right Moses, i don't do get this. revelation <laughs> why <laughs> don't i receive revelation you know yeah, yeah, yeah. heavenly father when are you going to tell me if you're going to part the water or not because the ark is heavy oh stop it man they just go you Jeez. know what there's the there's the river jordan we're on his errand. We're carrying his ark. We go. And then as soon as they went and their their feet were wet, the River Jordan parted. Are uh, we not all on his errand? I love... I, Amen. That's one of my favorite lines on the Lord's errand. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I so say it to myself so before good. I speak. I say it to myself before I do anything yeah. where I'm afraid and I know I need the Lord. Yeah. I say to him in my prayer, I was like, I am on your errand. I will do my part. And now I expect you to do yours mm-hmm. and not in a cocky way, but yeah. I know, yeah. let me, t- let me rephrase it. I know you will do yours. Yeah. He's bound. He's bound to he's do it. Bound. He's never and let me down. So something I actually started doing mm. when my wife was pregnant was we both got these journals for our, for, for our wedding, I think. And I journal, but how I journal is I journal to my son. Oh, so cool. what I do is. At the, at the the heading changes, it's like um, um, spiritual experiences or about mom or whatever. And then that journal, I talk about mom or I talk about that spiritual experience that I've had, but I'm talking to him That's cool. so that when he can then have it and then he can read what I was going through there, the, the testimony is, let's say if he goes off and he doesn't have a faith or not, but he can always see dad's testimony. He can see. That's cool. And I've asked my wife then to do the same for her from her experience so that he gets to see what we were going through as he was growing up. We, he, we, he gets to see where our faith was as he was growing up, you know what I mean? So that he can then pass it on to his son, or yep. his, you know what I mean? That's that really kind of, cool. That kind of way. I, I ask, I'm trying to get my dad, our dad, because he's had a ton, like a billion, million crazy cool experiences, terrible experiences, amazing spiritual experiences. I'm like, dad, can you please write some of these things down? I asked my mom to write a book. And please. I'm always like, T- whatever you need, I will give it to you. Just write a book because... Our parents have gone through so that, much. And that's something I would cherish. You're talking about cherish? 100%. I would cherish it. Yes. 100%. Because you'd be like, as much as you know your parents, you'd be like, what? Mm-hmm. Wow. And reading it and just studying it and learning about it. You know, how powerful would that There's be? Something, something from my father I would cherish, right? If he would write it down. Something from my heavenly father I would also cherish and I would powerful. write it down, right? Powerful. This is what, back on my point, he was writing a journal. So I've started writing things down too, right? And all of a sudden, all straight away, there's a difference. It's right? an immediate difference. And so I always, people always say this: keep a journal, write things down. And I was like, ah, eh, I hate writing things down, yeah, right? Yeah. And I have a bad memory. I mean, as a good memory, I have a terrible memory, right? So I'm always having to write things down, or I'll forget them. Um, so I started writing things down, just little spiritual things, even if I think it's something simple. Mm-hmm. I've been writing it down because there's a there's a the act of, you know, it's gathering that from your head and actually verbalizing it into to yeah, words on yeah, something yeah. makes it real yeah. right because revelation is so simple mm. it's the still small voice it's the simple 
It's probably so simple, and this is my problem. I reckon I don't even realize half the time That's exactly that it's right. revelation, yeah. that it's something from Heavenly Father. It's just me doing what I do. And uh, But so me, I have to really focus and go, wait a minute, that's actually amazing. And I've, I've been starting to write it down, and I've been getting more and more things happening. Because Lou, they're like uh, amazing, honestly. They, I look up to them like crazy. But they video record everything, every experience, wherever they go, all their kids, they've done it countless and mm. and i remember we went there for christmas and then we sat there and they were watching all the times when they were younger and all that and that's their journaling that yeah journaling journaling, journaling yeah. sorry yeah. Yeah, you got it. yeah that's that's their you know that's how they do it you know what i mean so yeah. <laughs> he usually is the one that catches me out of my english he wanted to say it in gaelic but he yeah <laughs> <laughs> shows his grand but um, yeah. can you please share with us your yeah, uh, scripture yeah. and who God yep. is to you. Before I do it really quickly, yeah. let's just say after having that really good discussion, let's commit ourselves to keep a keep a journal with revelations. Yeah. And the next time we get back together, let's share a revelation. Yeah, I love, I love that. that. Something that we've we've got, we've cherished, we've acted on, and how that's affected our faith. Can I do you one more? Yes, please. The listeners, yeah. Can ye mm. please? keep a journal from now on of as you were saying Ammon. Yep. A revelation journal. Spiritual yeah, yeah. spiritual whispers from the from the Lord. Can in, you, in whatever way that, that comes to you. Can you get revelation and spiritual experiences being out of the church? You yes. can be you can be acted upon by the light of Christ which is in every man, which is similar to a conscious and the Lord wants to interact with his children. He yeah. wants to be there for us. And he will enlighten our minds as we're seeking him. Mm. The Holy Ghost gives us the ability to have that as a companion continuously according to our faith in, and our, our worthiness. But for those outside the church, the Lord wants to have a relationship with you. If you seek him out, his hand is always outstretched and you will have experiences with him. Remember, the Spirit will testify to you of the truthfulness of the Book of Mormon before you ever join the church. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, he'll give you that truth. Truth is truth. Mm -hmm. The Spirit testifies of truth. That's a simple way. But I, I, I see no reason the Lord couldn't, you know, give someone... I don't know why he... Like, there's probably not a lot of reasons why he would give someone out of who's not a member revelation of, you know, serious importance because they aren't... Unless it was to guide them into the church. Well, that's why. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. So... Mm -hmm. But yeah... Yeah, awesome. Um, so your questions were, who, who is God to me? And I, whenever I get questions like that, I always think about my experiences because it's easy to try and, from a philosophical point of view, talk about... But yeah, and that's what I was pushing away from. Yeah. It's more of exactly, here. Exactly, exactly. Here, here. Here, yep. is, here is God to me. God to me is, I'm on my knees. It's one in the morning. I'm 32 floors up in the middle of Hong Kong. I don't know what I'm doing there. I want to go home. I don't know. I, you know, I, I, I can't handle another day. And I'm on my knees, bawling my eyes out. Speaking to the one person that knows what I'm going through. Speaking to the one person that can do something about my situation. That can change my heart. That can give me comfort. That can give me counsel. That can give me, show me love. That is who God is for me. When no one else is there, when no one else is is in your moment with you, when you're going through the hard times, when you're going through the good times, mm -hmm. he's the one that's always, 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 always been there. And so God for me is the, is the best friend. He's the father. He's the comforter. He's the creator. He's the, th through Jesus Christ, the savior of all mankind. Yeah. My, my way back to him, my way to eternal life. But in its most basic form, it's those moments where, you know, you have not, nothing else to rely on except him and understand that he loves you as much as anything else that he's ever created. That's powerful. You just brought me back on my mission and I got kind of emotional. <laughs> yeah, me too. You just said... You remember those I days. I just remembered on my mission those days where I just knew he's the only one that could understand right now. And if you didn't have those days, would you really understand God? Hardly. 
It's because of those moments that we have, those moments that get us down, those moments where we're challenged and we have hard times, that you find God, that you seek for God. And that's the problem with the pride cycle of the Nephites. They would, they would be blessed by God. They'd become wealthy. They'd become prideful. They'd forget who God was. They exactly. didn't need him anymore. The humility. Yeah, and then yeah, he would, and right. then he would say, no, sorry, you do need me. And yeah. he'd sweep the rug from underneath them. And then they would find God again. Yeah, that's all of us, isn't it? So that that's why we keep, and we have a great discussion here, because that's why we, we need to understand so clearly the need for gratitude, the need for humility, the need for obedience, mm. even if you don't always understand why. You're showing, you're showing God your love and your faith by following him, even if you don't really understand tithing. And, and if you look at that pride cycle right now, and you look at the world today, whereabouts are we? Peak. <laughs> ready for the fall. Oh, totally. Ready for the fall. Absolutely. So we need to ask ourselves and everyone listening, you know, mm. ask yourself, where, where are you personally in your life? Yeah. In that relationship with your God, what does God mean mm. to you? And how do you treat him knowing who he is? Knowing that he's your creator, knowing that he's your father, knowing that he has given you everything that you have. How are you treating him? Are you grateful? Anyway, that's, that's something that, for them to think about. But that's who God is for me. And, uh, yeah, your question was favorite scripture. This is one of my favorite scriptures because I think it's one of the few times in all of scripture where the Savior is communicating through a prophet in the, so, sort of in the first person. Okay? So he's talking like, I, I... Uh, I think I, I don't know all the scriptures that well, but he's mm. he's talking about his atonement experience in the first person, not like Alma or Ammon or someone talking about the Savior's going to go through the atonement. You know, he'll be he'll be led like a lamb to the yeah, slaughter, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. although he's never sinned, he'll be you know mm. slain for the sins of mankind and stuff like that. In this scripture, he's saying, "This is what I've done. This is what I'm doing." And for me, that's powerful. Doctrine and Covenants 19, 15 to 19. Therefore, I command you to repent. Repent, lest I smite you by the rod of my mouth and by my wrath and by my anger and your sufferings be sore. How sore you know not, how exquisite you know not, yea, how hard to bear you know not. For behold, I, God, have suffered these things for all that they might not suffer if they would repent. But if they would not repent, they must suffer even as I which suffering caused myself, even God, the greatest of all, to tremble because of pain, to bleed at every pore, and to suffer both body and spirit, and would that I might not drink the bitter cup and shrink. Nevertheless, glory be to the Father, and I partook and finished my preparations unto the children of men. So in the scripture he's saying, you better sort yourself out, because you don't know what I've had to go through for you. You don't understand how hard it could be for you if you don't allow me to atone for you. Because if you don't, you have to suffer even as I. Yeah. Which caused the greatest of all to tremble because of pain and wished that I didn't have to go through with it. But out of love, I've done it anyway for you. And so it's like, it's, it's God himself telling me you better sort yourself out, kid, because I'll do it all for you. And, I, and I, I have done it all for you. But you just have to repent. But when do they suffer? Because obviously you have people who have left the church and people who are not uh, religious in any way, but they look like they're thriving. They look like their life is it's good. Not, yeah, well, it's not in this life that they... Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah, it's that yeah. whole, some blessings come in this life. So that's what I'm saying. Like, life. when do they suffer? When is this suffering? Because... You know, it's that thing of, oh, God doesn't like, you shouldn't do that. But then why am I living nice like this? Here's the thing, right? The plan of salvation is so beautiful and perfect, right? And it's all based around, we talked about already, agency, right? It's the agency. We all chose to come here and participate. We choose whether we accept the Savior's atonement in our lives or not. And we essentially, therefore, choose how and where we will spend the rest of eternity, mm. right? And it's, it's those eternities where we live with those choices, right? But they are our choices of free choice and free will. That's why I don't think many people, when they're given all the information, I don't think they're going to make stupid choices. I think when everyone finally gets all the information about who Jesus Christ is and what he's done for them, I really 
don't think there's going to be many who would reject him taking upon himself their sins, their weaknesses, their infirmities, and doing that for us, right? Mm. Um, I just can't imagine that being the case. I, 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 yeah, anyway, that's just me. But where the, the, the eternities are where we're going to live with those choices, right? But God loves you. There's no, there's no hellfire and burning brimstone like some religions will tell you that someone's going to suffer physically in pain and burning forever. He loves everyone. We're all going to go to a kingdom of glory, somewhere really, really good. The only thing that we have to suffer with is choices that we made freely. Okay, can you just repeat that again? Because <laughs> all right, from the top. No, <laughs> no, so, but no, that that part where you're saying. Other churches say that you're going to burn eternally and whatnot, whatnot. And you just said something powerful. You said God loves us. So therefore, he would never want that for his children. Yeah, okay. But none of us burn. None of us burn. But what do we do? Say it again, please. So none of us are going to burn. It's, it's, it's like if you're watching a, a cartoon as a kid, right? Yeah. Bugs Bunny or something. And you know, like sometimes they'll fall down a hole and go to hell, right? Yeah, and down yeah, there yeah. is the devil and there's all this fire. And he's like, yeah. ha ha, you're down in there. And they'll shoot up and they'll go to heaven or whatever. Yeah. It's not like that. A lot of religions paint it that there's this clear 50-50. You're either just good enough or just bad enough to go to hell or heaven, right? Yeah. It's not that black and white. It's not that simple. And also, you're not going to be burning in some terrible place for eternity because God loves his children. So no matter how bad you do, yeah. right? Um, if your father gave you some choices and he said, this is what I really want you to do. Um, don't do this, please. And you went and did the, the bad option or did worse than that option. He still loves you. And it doesn't matter what you do. Like It's almost like you can, you can disappoint your parents, but you, they'll never hate you. Do you know what I mean? They always want what's best for you. And, in, and this is, this is the, the, parable, the parable of the prodigal son mm-hmm. is that the, yeah. son, the son takes his inheritance thinking the best thing that he could possibly do is go and blow it on the things of the world. Mm. And after he's blown it, he goes, oh, I've got nothing left. And actually, all I want is just to go work from, I just want my family. Mm-hmm. So he, tro- he thought he was finding joy. To your point, he thought he was finding the joy of the world. And after it was all gone, he's like, actually, that's not my joy. I just want my family back. And when he went back there, the older brother was really angry because he's like, you've welcomed him back like he did nothing wrong. And you've, you've welcomed him back and he's taken his seat here again. And the father went to him and said, you don't understand because everything that I have is now yours. You understand? So, so it, it might seem to some people that this, this life is just a time to eat, drink, and be merry. Just have fun and party and get out of it. We can get out of it. Heavenly Father is, is not going to eternally damn people for their lack of understanding. Yeah, that's right. The atonement of Jesus Christ rescued us for t- from two things. One is physical death. All of us will live forever. The second one is, is from sin if we choose to accept him. And like Chris says, and at the end of the day, I think most people are probably going to choose to accept him when the option comes available to them. Yeah. This life or the next, I think. Um, and I think that is part of the beauty of the plan of salvation as mm-hmm. well. But um, but those people are going to receive their inheritance like the prodigal son. You know, they're going to get exactly what they wanted to get out of this life. Okay? If as much as they're willing to accept Jesus Christ is as much as they're going to get out of it. But for all those who stayed on that farm and tilled the earth and worked their whole lives and were the ones looking at the guy's party and going, man, I know it's not right, but I kind of wish I could party as well. Yeah. Like take a day off and yeah, party yeah. as well and then still get the whole inheritance. Yeah. But those guys that do go through the hard times and stay on the farm and work as hard as they can, work until their fingers are bleeding, they get all the father's inheritance. They get to live in eternity with their families forever in God's presence. Uh, I think uh, you made the comment before about you know that lack of understanding. And I think Jesus says it perfectly on the cross where he's like, please forgive them for they know not what they do. You know, which is him basically oh, saying, goodness. even these people that are literally <laughs> killing, killing me, me. Yeah. right now, yeah. forgive them mm. because they have no idea what's actually happening here. Right now. That's, and the two guys next is, to him. 
Mm, yeah. He said, today, yeah. you will join me in paradise. That's right. And, and they, were, they were on the cross for being thieves. Yeah. Now, we're not, we're not condoning sin, but so there was an opportunity for them both. Yeah. So that's where I was going to head to now. Because the way you put it, me no, not going to church, going out every weekend, doing whatever I want to do, you're making it sound like I'm going to be okay. That everything's going to be okay. <laughs> That, not like, let's say if I'm talking about it as a non-member, yeah, non-Christian, yeah. non-anything, you're telling me I'm not going to burn. So I'm like, okay, all good. And the only thing I'm going to suffer with is my thoughts. I suffer with that every day. So I'm going to be good, right? Good and that's when I would love for you to help me understand then. Is that all right then? It's a degrees of glory as well, though. Mm-hmm. But um, in that in pre- that feeling, I'm so that means I'm okay to. This is a this is a deep question that we yeah. could really get into. But one thing that President Nelson said, I, I heart back to him a lot. But one thing that he said in the recent general conference is, he was encouraging members who are not married in the temple, to go and get married, and especially in the temple. Yeah. And he said something along the lines of, like, what does it matter if you don't get married in the temple? And he's like. Well, nothing, unless you want to be with your family forever. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, I, and I was like, I was like, whoa, mic drop moment. He's like, he's like, go and do this. But if you don't understand, there are consequences. Mm. And I, the times in my life when I've been closer to the gospel, I've been genuinely happier. I've been genuinely guided by the Lord. I've yep. been genuinely a better person. Mm-hmm. Everything that actually matters about life has been better for me. The times when I'm further from him, it doesn't matter if I'm having fun. It doesn't matter if I'm getting paid more at work. No, that stuff is temporary stuff that means nothing. Yeah. It's, the, it's the things in this life that mean something that the gospel ch- transforms and gives you right now. And you can choose to throw that aside or pass it aside and and hope that maybe you'll change at some other time. Yeah. Um, but there's no guarantee in that. And the other thing is, what are you giving up right now when you do that? And Chris will be the first one to tell you. His years of inactivity, he always says to me, I, t- I feel so bad about the, the times, the time that I've missed where I could have been more, I could have done more, I could have learned more. Mm-hmm. Wasted, 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 years. wasted time. Mm-hmm. That whole thing I mean, just said is like black and white to me. Do you know what I mean? Like it's it's super clear to me because I've only been active again for about a year, year and a bit, year and a half, mm-hmm. probably not even that long. Um, and so that difference between being less active and coming back to church is so clear, so different. Chalk and cheese. It is uh, the blessings of the gospel uh, are so beautiful and amazing. Um, the ceiling power that Ammon just talked about in the temple, that is actually the draw card that really brought me and my wife back into the church. So I guess going full circle, this is the end of my less activity story. Uh, We always did actually say that we wanted to come back to church. We always knew we would. So this is maybe why Ammon didn't have to stress so much. We kind of did, maybe he didn't even know that. I don't know, but we always did say we always intended to go back to church. I never really lost my testimony. There were times when it's a crazy world out there, and I have a lot of um, friends who are less active, and some of them are actually heading to sort of anti-Mormon <laughs> territory where they're, uh, you know, people get angry. Mm-hmm. They leave the church, they get angry, they feel bad, they feel scorned because they've wasted a lot of their time in what they believe to be not true anymore, and they try and bring others down with them, right? So I had a bit of that, but I never thankfully lost my testimony. So we always said we would go back to church, and we had a we had our baby, we had our daughter Blake, and... Um, I've got to really thank my wife, and I always say this because she was the one that finally put her foot down and said, "Hey, we got to we got to go back to church," oh, and it was um, it was the ability. It was firstly a realization of what period of time we're in, knowing that it's the last days, mm. um, and then it was the realization that I want to be sealed with my family and live with them forever. And if I don't do that before crazy things start happening, I will not get that chance. Mm-hmm. So that was the absolute draw card. So we came back to church and I thank Heavenly Father every single night, every single day for getting back in the nick of time almost, I feel. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we we were able to uh, come back into church in full fellowship and we, it was only now, uh, what are we, it was in sort of close to March. So near the start of the year, we did um, actually get sealed in the temple and it was the 
Best congratulations. Best day of my life. That's mm. powerful. He was he was there. It was the absolute best yeah, uh, best yeah. time of my life. It's it's um, what my testimony is built around is the person I was to the person I am now. There you go. You know, being a convert, it's mm-hmm. easy for us to have that sort of mm-hmm. yeah clear definition yeah. Mm. for someone like yourself where. You know, you've been a member of your life and you haven't even gone to Sati for a period of time. You have, mm-hmm. so you have mm-hmm. it as well. But That'd we sort of we sort of know that difference. And, and my testimony is built on that because I could see who I was compared to who I became after joining the church. So it, it, that's where my testimony is probably built upon. That's mm-hmm. my rock underneath. But I have a question for you about him. Mm. And I was going to ask it earlier, but we sort of went on. But I really want to, it keeps coming to me. When he went less active, hmm. did you feel any guilt about not being here? I think that's part of the reason I moved. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. Because when we, when I made, I think we had this discussion off air earlier about how I was talking about we, were ha- we had wake up stories and, hmm. you know, I had an experience that really woke me up and the Lord himself said to me, you've got to do something. And after I laid all that out with my wife and we decided that we're moving to Perth, what I laid out for her was the catalyst to receive the revelation that we should move to Perth. Mm. And what I laid out for her was that the most important thing in our lives is family. And the most important thing as we move into this, the, this end of the last dispensation of times, the last days is being with your family and strengthening one another and being there for each other because that's what you're supposed to want and what I want mm. for eternity. So I think after I sort of laid that out with her and she received the same answer for me, which was we should move to Perth. Mm. Yeah. I think a lot of that was about family, mm. which includes Chris and it includes you know my whole family. And mm. I've had, I've had a lot of crazy experiences where the Lord has told me, you know, how I have to work with the rest of my family and I, and I want to and I'm trying and I'll do the best that I can, but it's all about family. Mm. There's nothing else that's more important than that. Yeah, I think about the experience of Enos, Enos uh, in the field, who's hunting in the field and all of a sudden the, 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 um, the teachings of his father sank deep in his soul. And the first thing he did is got down and he, he prayed for forgiveness for his own sins. Mm. And then he heard the voice of the Lord say, you know, your sins are forgiven you. And then the next thing he did is he got back down on his knees and he prayed for the Nephite people around him. So his, you know, extended family and all that sort of stuff. And the Lord came to him again. He's like, yep, sweet. I'm going to bless the Nephites because of you and this and that. And that could have been enough for most people. But he got back down on his knees a third time and said, Father, I pray for my, my enemies, the Lamanites, and those other people that hate me. And the Lord came to him again and gave him a blessing for those people. So... Um, where are, where are we in the spectrum of loving one another and loving our brother as Jesus would have us love each other? Starts with us, it goes to our family, and then it should go out to everybody else. And a big part of that we're getting really hammered home on right now from our president and our prophet is saving those beyond the grave that need help saving. There's mm-hmm. no one else that can do that. It is our job and it is our time. So. As, as important as it is to try and rescue those around us, we also need to make sure we're not turning a blind eye to those that need us, that cannot save themselves. Mm. They're all waiting. They're waiting for us. That's beautiful. Mm. So if we go down to summarize everything, right? But before we summarize everything, tell me... Good, good luck. Ch- you know, we never actually went to the... <laughs> we, <laughs> we've not looked at a single thing on any yeah, of these yeah, but I, wanna, I actually want to say something <laughs> about that before we kind of wrap it up a little bit. The church, what is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day cha- uh, Latter day Saints? Well, I don't know where I was going to change. <laughs> Latter day Saints. Latter day Saints. My own church. <laughs> but um, what is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints? And yeah, like what is, can you just talk to me about the church? Yeah. What's the difference? Yeah. Well, uh, where is it going? <laughs> oh. <laughs> some good questions mm-hmm. well for yep. the first question right what is it it is the Lord's restored church it's only a different name because it's the last days it's in mm. the name the church of Jesus Christ of latter day saints it's the last days it's the latter days that is the only difference it is the church that Jesus Christ himself set up when he was on the earth mm-hmm. where is it going some really cool places <laughs> um, look 
We, we, like we've talked about a bit, we uh, personally know that we're in the last days, right? We're, we're here. The end is near. And we say that, like, not to sound ominous, like, uh, the end is but near. It's been said for a long time, the it end is near. But it's been yes. said in the Bible, it's been said in the Old Testament, the New Testament, it, the end is near. What is the difference with the end being near now? Jeez, I can take you through some things. Uh, this this is a this is a long conversation, but roughly, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. To give yeah. you a short version of it, what what I will say is, look at Russell M. Nelson, the president of the church, the prophet of the church, right? I don't think I actually put this in the notes here, and I bolded it. Has any prophet of our time ever been so clear about the time we are living in? Mm. I can't think of one that's ever been so clear. Um, for those with eyes to see and ears to hear about the time we are living in. Every single time he gives a talk, even his opening talk at the most recent conference pointed to things that point at the time we are living in being right at the end. Um, the things he's asking us to do, the, the you know, to, to look at ourselves, um, the things Ammon mentioned before, um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's do or die time. It's, mm-hmm. it's, 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 um, yeah, the in or out time. we're in or out. It's the yeah. end game. It is, it is almost all over. And that's why I'm so grateful to have been able to come back now. I feel like I've made it in the nick of time, li- really, literally. Um, and it's exciting. It's, it's, it's crazy time. It's exciting time, but what an amazing time it mm-hmm. is for us to live. Um, I feel like you've got things to say. <laughs> but before you say that, I love how our church and the prophet want you personally to have a connection with God rather than I remember on our mission the priests and the and the prophets of the church or the bishops of the church would be like you come to me and I'll tell you what God wants you to do but our prophet says hear him mm-hmm. you go and figure out who your who your God is and figure out how to connect with him how to hear him for your family for yourself and I absolutely love that because he's telling you you can talk to him. Yeah, we believe in personal revelation. revelation a lot of churches yeah, don't believe don't do that because yeah. you know during the apostasy, God doesn't talk to people again. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. But sorry, go on. Yeah, so very interesting question on very interesting question on. Um, oh, yeah, don't worry about that. Very interesting question on what is the church of, church of Jesus Christ? We are here on this earth. Because God had a plan, and that plan included us having the opportunity to choose if we wanted to be like Him. Mm. That's the entire reason that we're here. And His glory is that He will bring as many of us with Him as He possibly can. Okay? And Satan's glory is that He will take as many of us away from that plan as He possibly can. Mm. So what has God done to provide us with um, the vehicle to present this plan to us and to see that plan through, it is the church of Jesus Christ. So he's just given us a, a method and a vehicle and a, and a program in order to facilitate this plan so we can learn who he is, we can receive the ordinances that save us, we can learn and understand our, to keep commandments and follow Christ, and then we can get back to him. So this is just a vehicle. The, the church in itself is, is nothing really special. It's the things that it contains in order to get us back to Heavenly Father. That's so special. Absolutely. So we can't actually, we can't do it without that vehicle. It's, it's the, it's the inside. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's the eternal life express train. You're either on it or you're not in eternal life. And the prophet's yeah. the driver. Yeah, the train itself, yeah, yeah. maybe it sucks. <laughs> maybe you hate the seats. Maybe they're worn out. Maybe the people that get in the train are homeless weirdos and you don't want to sit next to them because they smell funny. Does it sound like church on Sunday sometimes? <laughs> you know you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Sometimes it can be hard to be a member of the church. Yeah. Um, I think for all of us, we have experiences that, that can say that. But no matter what those experiences are, you don't get off the train heading to eternal life just because you've, you, you don't like the guy you're sitting next to or just because the people outside of the train are saying, your train sucks. <laughs> I'm not getting off that train to eternal life for nothing. It yeah. doesn't matter how difficult, how bumpy, how long the ride is. Everybody's path is, is going to be bumpy and everyone's sitting next to someone that they may or may not get along with. But the point is that we need that train what, for eternal life. It goes back to what you started with, with the fact that when you get onto the car... You're going wherever that exactly. Going. So if that train instructor is the Savior Jesus Christ or the Prophet of God. Yeah, that's well, a better yeah. one. If it's yeah. prof- if President Nelson is in the w- at the wheel in the front of that train, 
you know of a surety that he's only going to take you to eternal life. Mm-hmm. And so when he speaks to us at general conference, it's, and they're, they're handing back the, um, the itinerary for the trip, he, you, President Nelson is going, okay, well, you guys have got to do this and do that. And you're sitting in your seat going, cool, I'll do this and that. And I stay on that train. I feel like it's an old coal train and Jesus is driving and President Nelson's pumping. Shoveling the coal. Shoveling the coal. <laughs> yeah. He's feeding us, you know. Like. Yeah. 100%, 100%. And, I, and I just wanted to bring that back to your point on hearing him. It is extremely important that in these days we, we personally understand how to hear the Lord. And one thing that's been more clear to me now than any time in my life is that the way to hear and understand who God is, is primarily through his prophet. It is primarily through his prophet and it is primarily through the keys of the kingdom that we hear and understand the Lord. Mm. He supplements that with revelation. What's king? Uh, So in in this train, in this train station, (laughs) people have certain authority. So there are train train conductors. So they make sure that the trains come in safely and they go safely and they go on time. You'll have security guards that make sure that there's no one beating each other up and it remains safe for families and that type of thing. You've got um, people in the watchtower or whatever, making sure they're coming and going and everything's fine. You've got a lot of people in this station making sure that things work. You, you, you will take a ticket and know to get on that train and that's right for you, okay? But you also need the help of everyone else that's around you that's been given the authority to protect you to guide you, this is the train that leaves at 5.30 p.m. in order to get to your destination. And they are the prophets and apostles and leaders with keys or authority in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So one thing we really need to make sure that people understand is you cannot, you cannot in the kingdom of God bypass the authority that God has put in place. So, and let me explain what that means. If the prophet comes down to us and says, Amen. I'm telling you, you need to jump. The Lord wants you to jump, start jumping. Guess what? I start jumping. If I say to him, I've received personal revelation that says that uh, my knee's sore and I don't want to jump, that is in contrast to the laws of the kingdom of God. Yeah. Okay. And no matter how bad that sounds or how difficult that may sound, Mm. that is the way it works. So when President Nelson comes out and he says, I counsel you, I urge you to do certain things. If you choose not to do them, that's up to you. Um, You do not receive the blessings of obedience. If you also say things like, I've received revelation from God uh, over your head, prophet, over your head, train conductor, that I don't need to do that. You're going to fall in the tracks and get hit by the train. Because that comes from Doctrine and Covenants with that Joseph Smith scenario where, you know, there was... Oh, I can't remember his name. He was, reckoned he was getting revelation about the church. And, oh. and Joseph Smith received Doctrine and Covenants, whatever it was. I about, yeah. yeah, I can't remember his name either. Yeah. But yeah. About the the instructions for the church will always come through the prophet. Exactly. Yeah. And so I wrote something down to a, a member that was struggling with this principle the other day. And this is how it went roughly. If I told you that I've received revelation that the Book of Mormon is absolutely false, would you believe me? No. And why wouldn't you believe me? Because the prophet says otherwise. Yeah. And what about and what about what you know personally? Do you yeah. know personally that it's true? Yeah. Okay. Does God change? Does he go to you, Rodney? The Book of Mormon is true for you. But Brian, the Book of Mormon is not true for you. Mm. That is a changing God. Mm. And there is a law irrevocably decreed before the foundation of this earth that God is bound to as well as man. And it is when we, it is only upon us keeping those laws that we receive his blessings and he is bound to bless us. Mm. So because you know the Book of Mormon is true and you know it, you also know that God who is loving and unchanging is going to also say the same thing is true to Brian. Mm. You know that. That is the principle of understanding that you know. Yep. So if Brian says to you, I've been told the Book of Mormon is not true, you know that that's not correct. Of a surety. Yep. Okay? So so it is with any of the counsel from the prophet. If the counsel is God's mouthpiece, whether by my own voice or the vo- voice of my servants, it is the same. So when President Nelson speaks, God speaks. That's who's talking. Mm. End of story. And if President Nelson says, Ammon, jump. 
I have to jump in order to follow God. No amount of personal weaseling out of that jumping is right in God's eyes. Mm. I can't say my revelation from God says I don't have to jump. It's not how it works. If the prophet receives something for you and tells you to do it, you are bound to do that in order to keep the laws irrevocably decreed in heaven. In order for you to do it, God would make sure that you also have received this rather than just the prophet receiving it. Perfect. That's the that is the yeah. absolute perfect ad, a, amendment to that mm-hmm. is that it's you like you the, have to have it you yeah, have to know yeah, it yeah yeah so you know you have to have the instruction yeah, yeah, something yeah. if you're living your life in the right way the prophet can't receive something and then come to you and tell you otherwise because then you're like because you the God would tell you exactly the same way God would be He's like because you the you're in that space too yeah mm-hmm. and you'd be like like you and your wife mm-hmm. for example you prayed and then you. You were both in that, was it? Yeah. And then you were like, uh, we need to move. And oh, you didn't say we need to move, but you asked her and she said you need to move. And you were in that space to be like, oh my gosh, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. And you both had that, you know what I mean, connection there rather than just one person, you know, receiving that. And that's why he delegates his authority. Yes. So that's why you have a prophet who receives direct information from the Lord. Mm Mm-hmm. And he hands that down to the apostles, and the apostles hand it down to the seventies, seventies to state presidents, state presidents to bishops, bishops to every other key holder, down right down to the father of the home, mm-hmm. receives that, receives those keys, and responsibility over over people, mm-hmm. so that they can bring that information down from God all the way down, so they can know it, they can know what God's will is, yeah. and then they can choose to follow it or not follow it. Mm-hmm. But you, what you can't do is say that I've received revelation that goes around the keys. Yeah. God, Because God, you know that God's going to tell you the Book of Mormon is true and you that the Book of Mormon is true. And if he wasn't to do that, he'd be a changing God and therefore not God. Yeah. And because he is God, if he tells us to do something through the prophet, he will also tell us personally to do the same thing. It will, it will not differ. Yeah. I just want to go to this before we close off. And I just read it, which is powerful. All God's children live celestial law the same way. So that part, that uh, Doctrine and Covenants 88, 21 to 22. Did you get a chance to read that one, Rodney? Could we, could we read that one? It's a no. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, Pray everyone a, listening. <laughs> <laughs> I did everything else on here. You chose the one part I didn't do. Could, could you read that there? That bottom part. They who are not sanctified... Through the law which I have given unto you, even the law of Christ, must inherit another kingdom. For he who is not able to abide the law of a celestial kingdom cannot abide a celestial glory. And so it's your choice. Mm. To to abide the law. Yeah. Do you know why I randomly used the idea of a train? Why? Before we came on here and I was telling you that I had... A spiritual experience where I was told by the Lord, you either prepare yourself for what's coming or you'll get in trouble. Yeah. Part of that experience that I had is that I was taken to a train station. And in that in that moment, I was handed a ticket. And I had the, on the ticket, it had numbers and it had colors. And in that moment, I comprehended that the choices that I made in my life had led me to that train station and given me that ticket with a very particular seat and a particular destination. The choices I had made previously had got me to that point, right? So no matter what happened now, I am going where I deserve. Mm. I'm going according to the decisions and choices I've made through my life. That's your ticket. That is my ticket. You don't exchange it, you go where you're going. You're sitting where you you decide to sit. And so when I woke up, I was like... Where would my ticket take me? If I was given my ticket today, if I had to speak to the Lord and he said, here is your ticket and here is where you're going, would I be satisfied that I've lived my life in the right way to go to the place where I want to be? And at that moment, the reason I had that experience is because I wasn't. Mm. And I knew that if I did more, if I knew, if I improved myself, if I tried to be a better follower of Jesus Christ, repented of my sins, prepared myself for the things to come, that ticket would take me to eternal life. And this goes to you as listeners. Where would your ticket take you? 
And I think it's something we all have to think about, which is powerful. It's like, where does your ticket take you right now in your life? And I know some friends would be like, well, my ticket's taking me straight to hell, so I'm just going to mm-hmm. take it. But really think about it. You know, that thinking you do when you're by yourself in the room, there's no one around you, there's no phone, there's no Instagram, Facebook, just you and yourself. When you are by yourself right there and then, without anything distracting you, you think about where your ticket takes you because I know you will be, you will then be like, oh, snap. Yeah. Because that everything else gets in our way and we kind of, you know, joke around and we, but when you're by yourself in your room and you're really thinking deeply, it will hit you. It's a great wake up call. Yeah. And, and everyone can change their ticket. Mm-hmm. Now. It, Until final that, judgment. It, now. It's that whole thing where people are like, oh, you know, if I step into a church, I'm going to burn and all that. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah. That's just not true. You know, like everyone can change their ticket. So basically, if you're thinking about your ticket and you're thinking, where would your ticket take you now? And if you feel like that ticket won't take you to where you need to go, you're saying change now. Exactly. Today. It's like the one ticket you can change. I don't like where my ticket's mm. taking me. I can actually do something about this. Yep. Yeah, that right was my now. that was my experience. Doesn't I was matter like, how old you are. Yeah. That that ticket, I and and I comprehended that it was a good ticket, but it wasn't where I, it wasn't exactly where yeah, I wanted it wasn't to be. Good enough. Mm. So it doesn't matter your age where you come from, whatever, you can literally switch your ticket up. Well, let me, let, let's put this into a scenario, right? Let's say you're 90. Mm-hmm. So you're 90. So for 90 years, you weren't a member, okay? And you, you lived your life, etc. And then all of a sudden, you do what we've just asked, mm-hmm. right? And then the next day, you go, you know what? I'm still alive. I'm still kicking. I need to change. Let's say you spent 12 months. You got your life in order. You got baptized. Joined the church. Got... You know, maybe sealed the temple or went to the temple, you know, did all your ordinances, etc. How happy do you think he would be with oh. just that one year that you gave? That because, one sheep, huh? Yeah, because you changed for him. Mm. You gave up everything for him. You know, and as that says in that talk, you, you sacrificed, you gave unto him, you know. Imagine that. Imagine how different your ticket would be. Just That's the that. beauty of repentance. You don't have to drag your whole 90 years of junk with you. Mm. Um, you got fresh luggage. And, and they talked about that a lot in conference I've noticed this year is about the whole stop carrying your burdens. Mm. You've already repented for them. Stop mm. bringing them back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, um, which I, I, always find, I always find powerful. You know? Where do we sit when it comes to other religions and in, in that, you know, their belief and all that where do we sit as a church so jesus christ is the savior of all mankind he gave he gave up his life for every single person man woman and child regardless of what they believe in where they live or at what time they lived and it's even more universal than that because it extends beyond our own earth but he did that thing for all everybody is going to have the opportunity at some point in this life or the next to know Jesus Christ and choose whether or not to accept his sacrifice. doesn't matter what they've worshipped up until that point. It doesn't matter who they thought they've believed in up until that point. Everyone is going to have with a perfect knowledge who Jesus Christ is and have the choice as to whether or not they accept him and follow him or not. So It's um, not that you see him and then you're like, oh, I believe now, by the way. Yeah, but yeah. It's a sense of the same person you were in this life would be the same person you are in the next life. Meaning, if you were going to say no to him right now, as the missionaries came over and started talking to yeah. the, gospel, the gospel to you, and then you go into the next life and Christ is coming up to you, mm-hmm. you would still say no because that is who, who, you, are. who but you are. But they do get they, to learn more about him. That's though. right. Because it's... They won't be judged off a, a bad... Um, a chance encounter or yeah, something yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. you know you had a bad running with a person but you don't have, judge him forever based yeah. on that it's it's and the righteous people in the next life teach those people. yeah true the, true. the plan true. is so perfect he's, he's got every every um aspect. facet aspect covered yeah, yeah. yeah the only thing i wanted to throw in there on top of that is we do not disrespect we do not downplay anybody's religions um thoughts feelings or spirituality in any way shape or form and in fact that is the backbone of our religion is that we um, we all what we all welcome men. all men to worship how, where, where and what they may. Hmm. That is the backbone of our religion. And um, so it's not to downplay what they have now. All we're saying is that 
we truly believe that we have something to add on top of what they have. Yeah. And so having spirituality, having a belief in a God gives you more purpose. It gives you moral compass. It gives you knowledge and understanding, um, you know, a desire to live for something. It's all beautiful things. And all I'm saying is from what I know, knowing that we have an unchanging God and that he will not say truth to me and not to you, is that I know that Jesus Christ lives mm. and that he's died for me. I know that Jesus Christ lives and he died for you and everybody else. And so at some point they will get to know that. So it's not downplaying, just to repeat what you're saying, it's not downplaying this fact that we, be, we, we love that you worship, we love that you have a belief. We're just saying we have more to add to what you're just going to add some add some spice. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> and I yeah. love that President Nelson quote. Was it uh, the joy we feel has little to do with the circumstances of our lives and more to do with the focus mm. of our lives? Mm-hmm. And when our focus is Jesus Christ, that's when joy comes. Okay, Amen. guys, Beautiful. I think it's I think it's time to wrap this up right now because <laughs> I think it's been deep, it's been powerful, it's been amazing. Just to end off the way we usually end off. What's the one thing you want to finish off to say to the listeners right now? From everything we've talked about, from what you're feeling in your heart, to that one person that's listening that really needs to hear whatever you feel right now in your heart. I can start with Rodney, and then we can work our way. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, so I think you're going to start with me. Um, Yeah, look, I'll probably go back to what... I probably really got from conference this time. Yeah. Um, I think conference was powerful for you because I feel It was, yeah. 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 Um, I literally just finished it today. Yeah. Um, And probably for me, it was that doing that little bit more, that 1%, Mm -hmm. you know, what what aren't we doing that we could do that little bit better? And if we improve on that and improve on that, we'll, we'll get better and better and better and better. And then within a year, we wouldn't even know what what it was like being before. Mm-hmm. Um, and that other part of it is that whole trying to remove those parts of our lives that we've already repented of, you know, move yeah. past those yeah. things. I think people carry those burdens too much. Mm-hmm. You've repented on it. He, he forgets. Mm-hmm. It's gone. Mm-hmm. Um, so as we, as we do that 1% better, and I'm going to do the journal, that's going to be my thing, um, and we remove those things that can be our 1%. So first thing first, our first 1% is I forget those things that are keeping those burdens on me Yeah. because I have repented of them. I don't need to keep thinking about them. Mm-hmm. And then I can add something else and then add something else and add something else. Just 1%. Mm-hmm. That would be my thing. If we all take that challenge on from conference about that 1% in 12 months' time, we'll all be different. So and this really is what you're way. leaving for homework for the listeners. This right is what now. I'm leaving. One percent, one percent more each day. Each day, thank mm. you. Mine, mine's similar to that, I suppose, in the fact that my my thing is, it's never too late to change, um, and and do it now. Do you know what I mean? Um, it, it feels good to have done that myself. It's that constant repentance, the constant improving, um, and then on top of that, it's the the constant um, desire to find out what Heavenly Father wants for you. Right, because he knows you better than you know yourself. He knows what's coming better than you know yourself. Go to him and put it on him and ask him and let him show you, him guide you. And then when he gives you things, cherish it. Mm. Write it down, love it, um, and act on it. And then don't keep going back for the same answer again and again because you don't like the answer you got, mm. um, as Rodney's friend did, and as Joseph Smith did as well. There's uh, yeah. some sometimes when Joseph Smith did that and learnt the hard way as well. Um, so I guess, I guess the thing is, let's all continue to try and improve. It's never too late to, to improve, except that it is the last days and we are kind of running out of time. And there's a whole deep, one of the things we wanted to talk about was the last days, right? And we, this, this conversation has been great, by the way, we've yeah, gone, yeah, it's yeah. been like, it's yeah, been yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, like an absolute, <laughs> absolute yeah. roller coaster train, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this, yes. is, this has been everything it needed to be. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. every time someone says something, it riffs off into something else. It's been so fun. So, yeah. um, look, it's, I say it's never too late to change, but at the same time, I, President Nelson himself and some of the other apostles and things in this last conference did talk about an urgency. They do say there is an urgency. Um, so... I guess I'm saying it's never too late to change, but just know that there is a bit of an urgency and let's let's continue to do better and strive on um, improving our relationship with Heavenly Father. And you said cherish. Mm. And cherish it. Cherish, when, cherish when, those times. Yeah. Um, 
President Nelson at the last General Conference said that you are the people that Nephi saw in vision where power and great glory and in righteousness descended upon the saints of God. And I ponder on that a lot. And what I've come to understand is that if we don't choose to be those people, if we don't choose to seek out the power of God, then we will not receive it. And those things will not become fulfilled in our lives. We will not be prepared for the things that come. And just like I was telling you my experience with that train earlier, you will not be on the train and get the ticket you want to get on. That is for the members of the church to understand now. So my, my, my encouragement for everybody is to un- understand that we are living in the, in the time of things that Nephi saw. Like President Nelson told us, please do whatever it takes to understand what it means to receive power and great glory and choose to be the one that receives it. Don't leave this for some other generation. Think that some other generation will do it. Don't leave it to think that you can sit in your home and do nothing and you receive power and great glory from God because that is not how it works. We've spoken a lot about revelation and a lot about the process of um, developing the power of faith. Mm. Do what it takes to not only understand it, but receive the power of faith. Then you will be the people that Nephi saw in vision. Then you will fulfill the prophecy of president that President Nelson gave. That's going to prepare you for the things to come. We will get into that some other time. But there are things to come that are going to separate and divide. And I will be on the Lord's side no matter what. And I will understand as best I can to hear him by applying faith and receiving his power so that I am safe and stand in holy places. And so my encouragement is to do that. Understand it and then do it. Mm, that's powerful and for me Joshua comes into my head choose you this day whom you will serve as for me and my peers right here in this podcast right now we will choose the Lord Um, this has honestly been amazing and I just wanted to finish off with two things again sorry name one thing you're grateful of of your wife we'll start this way this time um there's a, there's a lot of things. Yeah, one, yes. Uh, one thing is her absolute unselfishness. Whenever something needs to be sacrificed, she will be the first to sacrifice it. If it's for someone that she loves, she will always sacrifice. She will always go without to put someone ahead of herself. That's powerful. I mean, that's basically very, basically what I would, I would say as well. Like, um, my wife is always doing way more for me than I could ever do for her. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she asks very little of me and I still complain. Yeah. So, uh, she just does so much. Um, yeah, it's just the scales are uneven. And mm-hmm. so, I, I'm just so grateful to her for... Do you let her know? I do, but I should do... Better, we can do better. Yeah, we, yeah. we can all do better. 100%, 100%. How about you, Rodney? Um, I like the way my wife loves people. Mm-hmm. You know, she really goes out and loves people and shows people love, you know what I mean? Like, she's always doing stuff for others. and But she has that genuine love for people. Um, you do feel it. I mean, I, I only yeah. met her for the first time tonight and you feel it straight yeah. away. Yeah. It's yeah. not just her management skills. <laughs> <laughs> Did she go to lovely management school? <laughs> <laughs> you know, she she serves good Bundabergs and stuff. Yeah, the, yeah. the best. Uh, the best. But uh, yeah, she she shows love better than I do. You know, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and it comes off. People mm. people definitely feel it. You they see get, the Savior's love in her. Yeah, and people get very warm and welcomed around her. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Mm. And the thing for me also for my wife is that thing of, I think it's along with you, is the sense of I know that she gives way more, especially I see her now with our son. The energy she gives to him is, it just doesn't make sense for me. Like for me... There's times where I'm holding him and like she she went for a meeting the other day and I was like with him for a few hours and I felt this pressure and I was like, go to sleep or do it. And I was like, she does this every single day and in the energy when I come home, the energy she gives and I'm like, how do you do this? Yeah. And it just helps help me understand the love. And that's why I wanted to talk about because the love the women have in their hearts is something us as men could only dream to have. Yeah could only dream to have and if we had it we would be as great as them mm-hmm. and we are very very lucky and honestly mm-hmm. you guys are 
honestly amazing in a sense of and you know, you've said so much about looking up to us but and I speak for Rodney too we mm. look up to you guys we look up to you guys for for first of all for starting a platform to talk about God to put yourself out there second of all for being so strong and to for your knowledge you don't just have the knowledge you have just by waking up and just having it you have studied you have learned you have put so much into it and we can only dream to have that same knowledge that you have and it's such a powerful thing they they wrote more notes for this one episode than we've written in every episode (laughs) every episode and it's it's (laughs) and we didn't look at them once (laughs) no but it's it's that it's it's powerful it's honestly a powerful thing and we could only say thank you from the bottom of our hearts thank you because when we started this we we were looking up who was around Perth, uh, like Western Australia, and we mm. found out it was just you guys. It was good timing. And we were yeah. like looking at you guys, like you guys are up there. We want to <laughs> be there. We want to be in that, you know, that thing of oh my gosh, this is amazing, and for you to be with us today, it's like for us. I know. I hope I'm speaking for you too, but it's yeah. like wow. And for me today, honestly, I was in awe. If you probably watch the video, all you see is my mouth open and like. Just looking at you like, oh, this is powerful. This is powerful, you know. <laughs> but we thank you so much for taking the time to driving here, spending time with us. Mm. Don't think this is the end, listeners. Obviously, this was so powerful that it's going to happen again. We're going to speak again. This time it's going to be on their show, <laughs> on YouTube, the two brothers. Check it out. Honestly, if you think this was amazing, just go out and just look at what they do and you will come out with a better knowledge than anything else. And I just want to close off with you. What else would you like to close off with, Rod? No, that was good. Can I say one thing? Mm. I just, I just want to put back everything you just said to us back on you. Thank you so much for having us. It's been so fun. Mm. Such an organic conversation about mm. such awesome things. So yeah. thank you so much. Really, really fun. And again, I, I just want to put it back. Every, all the gratitude you just gave and all the awe and admiration you just gave to us, I put back on you tenfold because you're doing exactly what we do, except you don't have the whole life of being in the church doing it. You're converts. Yeah. And I, mm-hmm. I, to me, that I find that um, so admirable. I, I really appreciate so that. So did you so. give it back tenfold? Like give it back twenty-four. <laughs> <laughs> keep going. Yeah, double, yeah. double down. Yeah, yeah, no returns. Yeah, yeah. There was a ninety percent discount. So <laughs> yeah. you, you get to keep the, the, what the has, glory. What has come out of this pod yeah. is that the church could do pop-ups. Yeah, 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 yeah. But no, I'd love great. to say a prayer while this is on to close this. Um, if that's all right, it's got, so yeah. something different. Yeah. Do you mind if you said it for us? Yeah. So the, we're just gonna say a prayer for all those listeners out there. If you wanna and bow Amen's your head, gonna and yep. Amen's gonna say, yeah. Dear loving Father in heaven, we are so truly grateful, grateful to have this opportunity to share together the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're so truly grateful for Jesus Christ and for His atoning sacrifice. We're so grateful to understand it. Grateful for the way that it blesses our lives every day. Grateful for the knowledge that helps us to know how to return to live back with thee through the vehicle of the gospel of Jesus Christ and through thy church. Father, we are so grateful for our testimonies. We ask thee to please bless us that our foundations and our testimonies may be strengthened so that we will receive power from thee so that we can withstand the events to come and also experience the joy and the wonderful blessings that Thou has in store for us. Father, we're so grateful for the scriptures that lead and guide us, that teach us of these things to come, and we look forward to them, in particular, the return of our Saviour to rule as King over this earth. And we, we do truly hope that Thou would help us prepare for that time. Father, help us prepare that, uh, prepare that our tickets may be first class towards Thy kingdom. Help us to understand how to return with Thee so we can gain eternal life. We love thee and we are grateful for all that we are blessed with. Please bless us with the spirit to lead and guide us. Um, Bless each one of us that we we will do that little bit more, that 1% more, that we can improve ourselves each day until the the perfect day. We love thee, Father, and are grateful for this opportunity again and look forward to line upon line receiving more of thy word and more, more of thy knowledge and more of thy kingdom. And we say these things in closing and give thanks for this opportunity together in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
And thank you for listening to LES Down Under. <laughs> Down Under! With, the, with two brothers! Legends. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, guys. That was great. Now is the time for members and missionaries to come together, to work together, to labor in the Lord's vineyard, to bring souls unto Him.